G'day YouTubers, it's uh, Spanner Man here again with another video. In this uh, video we're going to uh, go over a few procedures on how to break a chain and join a chain. Uh, a couple of people asked me uh, could I uh, make a video, so I said yeah sure. Okay, so let's say that you don't have many tools uh, and you want to break a chain, you've got minimal tools. All right, we'll we'll do we'll do this option. This is the the cheapest and quickest way to do it. But you're going to need some sort of metal, uh, a block of metal of some sorts. Can't use a brick or anything. It'll uh, won't really support the pressure of hitting it with a hammer. So you're going to need something solid. So try and find yourself a decent bit of metal. Secondly, I've just used an eight mil nut here, and I've got a uh, chrome vadnium punch of approximately about two mil diameter. Now. Before you actually start to break the chain, it's a good idea that you grind the rivets off. So we've already done that. I will just show you that the rivet heads are being ground off. That makes it a lot easier to break the rivet. So really, we're not really going to break the rivet. We're just going to pop, pop the top of the drive plate off. Now, the most important thing that when you do this, that your punch goes right in the middle of the rivet. If it's if, if, if you put your punch at the side of the rivet, it may not pop it. So you've got to make sure that it's right in the middle. So same thing here, where the nut is, we place the rivet as close as possible into the middle. And we place the punch as close and accurately as I can into the rivet and we'll give it a sharp hit. Okay. That's popped it, and what we'll do now, the nuts just got caught there a little bit there, so we'll just get that off, that's all right. You see, that's, that's popped off. Now, I've got to pop the other side off. Now, I could do the same thing with a nut, but I wanted to show you probably, an, there's two different other methods you can use. This is an adjustable vise for about oh, $14. So that's another method. You can use that vise, adjustable vise. Or you can buy this unit here, comprises of three pieces. This is an anvil that has uh, uh, three sizes, quarter inch, 0.325 and 3.8 on one side. Turn it over. You've got half inch, 7 sixteenths and 404 on the other side. So this works quite well, and the two punches, uh, this punch here is used to punch the rivet out, and this punch here is to flare the rivet, the, or the preset. So if I just place this other one over, now the other thing, that was using a nut, as you saw, was quite easy. But when using an anvil, always find that when you want to break a link, I break a link with the tooth facing upwards. That's the way it fits in the anvil as well, because if you try and do it with the tooth facing downwards, the tooth on the bottom uh, yeah, pr uh, is protruded down, which means it fouls on top of the, of the anvil. So if I was to break the rivet here, it doesn't sit very flush, whereas I place the, the, the tooth that's sitting on top because underneath is flat, it sits better. It doesn't have no tooth protruding. So always do it that way. So, okay, on this anvil, same procedure. Instead of using the nut, we place the punch right in the center. Give it a sharp hit. One, two, that's it, broken. So there we go. That's one method using a nut, cheapest method possible. And the other method using the anvil and the punches. The third method is using a machine with the anvil and a spinner to join it. So that's what people do in a uh, chainsaw shop. But you can, as you can see at home, it's quite easily to do using a nut, which most people would probably have these two tools, a nut and a punch. And then you just need a ball peen hammer worst case scenario use a normal hammer so most people should be able to have those tools to break just make sure that you grind uh, uh, the uh, 
rivet heads off. If you don't grind the rivet heads off, it's going to be a lot more difficult to actually break and pop uh, the, the, the tie plate off. Okay, so now that we've broken uh, a chain, uh, you may have found out that you wanted to make the chain shorter or you want to make the chain longer. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm only here to show you how to rejoin. So you'll notice that when you look at a drive link, uh, there's a little tiny notch in it down the bottom. You'll see that notch. And the chain, if you look at your chain, you'll see the, the same sort of notch. So make sure, we'll do this upside down. So if we grab the chain, there are little notches in the chain also. You'll see those notches. So it's just a matter of grabbing the end of the chain, bringing the two ends together, make sure that the chain is in the right way. Put in your little drive link in. And just put the top, the tie bar over there. And it should look something like this. That's what it should look like. So now what we have to do, on one side I'll use a ball peen hammer and on the other side, I'll use the punch. Uh, so you just need a normal block of steel for this. No anvil. Sit in like so. And this is the punch. We'll just give you another look at that. That's the punch that's got that curvature inside. So that's just a matter of placing that over the top. Give it a couple of hits. Now, I, I don't want to hit, if, if you're going to use this punch, you punch, say, two times, and then you punch that side two times. Now, the reason that you sort of do that is so that it doesn't, if you punch real hard, sometimes this uh, tie plate might buckle up a little bit, so you don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is re-punch that, but I'm going to use the ball peen hammer on this side, and then I'll come back to that one, so... Okay, so that should be enough. Now we'll use the punch on the other side just to make sure that it's done. Yep, that's fine. I'll see if we can actually get a zoom in. See if we can bring that chain up to the camera. You'll notice... Oh, if you can see it there, the f yeah, that's not too bad. I think you can see that. You can see the flares are different. The ball, ball peen hammer is a totally different flare than the punch. Now, you don't need to flare much. It, it won't come apart. Even though, like, you look, you look here, this is the, done by a machine. It's much neater, and the diameter of it's a, a little bit bigger. That's only because it, it was done like on a, on a spinning type machine, like like the one that's here. So if you use one of these spinning machines, you get a, a much nicer uh, flare. But the moment that you flare, even with a ball peen hammer, uh, the rivet will never come out. So just to recap again. Uh, We'll just uh, do a quick recap. You want to break a chain and, and you don't want to spend much money. Uh, well, yeah. All you need that is an 8 millimeter nut. You need a hammer, preferably a ball peen, but if you don't, you don't. And you need a punch, uh, preferably a high quality punch with a tip of about 2.5 millimeter so that it gets over the rivet. Next thing is that you grab your chain, take it to the grinder, or if you've got an angle grinder, try and grind off the rivets, 
That way it'll make uh, punching the top off the rivet very, very easy. Uh, it can be very difficult to knock the rivet off. Uh, like steel chain is quite tough, probably a little bit more tougher than Oregon. And Oregon I can knock out with a punch quite easily, but steel chain's a little bit tougher. So, uh, yeah. Method number two is that you go out and buy yourself an anvil. Whether uh, you buy an adjustable anvil for $14 or you buy an anvil that comes with punches and a flaring tool. Typically $14, typically about $25. But most important that you should have some sort of block of steel. And even if you get yourself a, a little bit of I-beam or you go down to a scrap metal dealer or something and just get a, some little solid bit of metal that you can sort of work on. Anyway, look, I hope that video helped. Uh, uh, so simple to uh, uh, to knock the rivets out if you grind the tops off. And that's probably the one thing that I would say to most people that if you've got a second-hand chain and, and you want to repair it and you've only got a punch, you can use a nut and a hammer. And if you grind the top off with an angle grinder or a bench grinder, you can... Uh, pop that tie strap off where the rivet is quite easily and the only other thing you do if you go down to your local dealer and, and you just ask for the master joining link uh, they normally sell them in a packet if you buy them in still there's nine in a packet they're only about for oh, 60 under yeah two for a dollar so they're quite cheap uh, and you can join you know you can make you, you can make your chain shorter or longer uh yeah and look it's it's quite easy to uh to damage uh the chain or damage the tools the punches uh if you're hitting them too hard and you don't have them in the center or the other thing that can happen if you got an adjustable vice you've got to make sure that that when you tighten this vice up because it's adjustable that it just grabs hold of the tie straps so the tie strap, uh, that's a picture of a tie strap, that when you close the vise, that the vise just touches the tie strap like that. This one's approximately seven millimetres, the tie strap. So this vise would be adjusted to approximately you know, seven millimetre, just touches. And, and this one here is the same as well. It's just a snug fit. And, and that's the thing is, if you're not too sure of what size that you've got and you've got one of these when you put your chain in there the chain should have hardly any movement so an example would be so if i just reiterate you can just see there's there's a little bit of movement there just a little bit of movement probably almost a millimeter whereas if i use this it's so it's it sits in there with a little bit of play, but not much. It's so that it's, uh, what actually happens, what supports it is the, when you put it in the vise and you have that little gap, your two uh, uh, drive links are sitting on the edge. So if we could just sort of demonstrate that, or if I use this vise, when, when you actually use an anvil, The, you can see that the drive links, the drive, drive links are sitting on the anvil. So they support, they support the, uh, the whole chain. And, and that's why it's important that you make sure that you put the right chain in the right slot so that, uh, yeah, you know, like if you were to put this chain in the half inch, It'd be too sloppy, and what can happen, the chain can actually uh, tilt and get all jammed in there. So just make sure of that, that you're doing it the right way. Anyway, look, I hope this video helps. Uh, I enjoy sort of making these videos and enjoying uh, helping people that are not too sure what they're doing. It's certainly not for the professionals because they know what they're doing. It's more aimed at the handyman that's not too familiar 
and wants to have a go. So, look, I hope this helps. Uh, so, Spanner Man, uh, bye for now.